Bueno, yo, yo me, estaba, me estaba despidiendo porque justamente ahora eh, me tengo que ir a, a un Zoom como presentación representante de la Federación en la OEA, justamente con el tema del cuidado. Este, así que me llevo muchas cosas para, para decir en estos 10 minutos que me dieron eh, para poder hablar sobre el tema del cuidado de las trabajadoras del hogar. Pero como puse en el chat, creo que es importante eh, que nuestras afiliadas de la federación eh, tengan el concepto y tengan presente como un objetivo el tema del cuidado dentro de, nuestra, dentro de nuestro sector, ¿no? Creo que nuestras bases y nuestras líderes necesitan este tipo de información y este apoyo que nos está dando la OIT hoy en este grupo reducido, pero que nosotros lo tenemos que extender a nuestros afiliados para que ellas puedan hacer incidencia, como hicimos desde Argentina, este, eh, incorporar en la agenda de, las de políticas públicas desde el Estado el tema del cuidado como al trabajo doméstico, como un sector importante del cuidado dentro de, nuestro, de nuestras organizaciones y en nuestros estados, ¿no? Donde se tiene que hacer incidencia por el tema principalmente, como habló Claire y como habló Humberto, sobre la protección de muchos países que por ahí tenemos leyes de la protección de las trabajadoras domésticas en todo lo que tenga que ver en derechos y beneficios eh, en el tema, y también en el tema de la capacitación, ¿no? El, el tema de la capacitación, qué importante es para nuestras trabajadoras eh, estar eh, capacitadas en el tema del cuidado, ¿no? Eh, este tema para nosotros es muy importante porque desde nuestras escuelas de capacitación tuvimos que cambiar inclusive, inclusive perdón, la denominación de nuestros, de nuestros cursos de capacitación. Tuvimos que empezar a cambiar los nombres y llamar cuidado de adultos mayor, cuidado de las tareas del hogar, porque esto es, como bien dijo Claire, es el, la problemática que pasa es saber que son las trabajadoras eh, domésticas que eh, eh, se sienten vulnerables, se sienten disminuidas, se, se sienten que su trabajo no es importante, entonces le cambian la palabra, y le dicen ustedes son cuidadoras y de ahí es donde las engañan y las sacan del sector que le corresponden los derechos. Entonces, bueno, gracias Claire, gracias Humberto, gracias Fit, porque realmente eh, fue muy importante esta capacitación y lamento tener que irme en este momento, pero eh, lamentablemente tengo que dar este Women en la OEA y que justamente tiene que ver con el tema del cuidado y me llevo mucha información este, para representar a la federación. Así que un beso grande para todas. Ya, yeah, please, Adriana. Ok, um, <laughs> okay I'll try my best. Um, so Carmen was saying that um, she was about to leave. Uh, she actually has to give a, a presentation in a webinar with the Organization of American States on care. And she's taking out a lot of good ideas based on this discussion. Um, but what she wanted to say is that it is very important for um, our affiliates to have clarity on the concept of care work and to include this on their union agenda. Uh, now what we have to do is to bring down this information to our affiliates and to the bases uh, so uh, they can do a uh, good advocacy with their governments. Um, it's important to be especially uh, paying attention to uh, uh, topics in regards to social and labor protections for domestic workers when talking about care, care economy, but also another it's about the uh, skills training. Uh, for domestic workers. Uh, this is also very important for our sector uh, and in the case in Argentina uh, where they have, where the union has a skills training school for domestic workers, they even had to change uh, some uh, concepts and uh, for example such as elder care, child care, um, based on the def legal definitions I guess of their country. Um, the concepts and the words have uh, also uh, a lot of uh, weight and uh, when domestic workers are named as care uh, workers and can some have, have negative stereotypes like Claire mentioned, these uh, could be uh, um, a reason um, for them to be easily um, confused by these other employment agencies that calls them 
uh, misclassifies them and um, the result is that they ended up uh, being uh, misclassified as self-employed and the, the other denominations that, that she explained. Um, she uh, also thanked uh, to the ILO and to IDWF for providing this, this training. Oui, eh, bonjour tout le monde. Je peux continuer? Yes, please. Uh, and then after you speak, okay. you ask Kenneth to... Oui, eh, je n'ai pas pu suivre uh, le début parce que j'avais un petit souci de connexion. J'aurais souhaité un peu comprendre uh, le stéréotype, surtout au niveau des femmes travailleuses... Uh, Migrant, c'est ce que je n'avais pas bien compris lorsqu'on expliquait au niveau des tableaux. Merci. Uh, can, uh, okay, um, maybe someone can translate from... I, I can just summarize the question. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, um, can you don't, uh, don't change your interpretation channel? Okay, thanks, uh, Claire. Sure. Um, so, Asma was asking if... Um, you know, to, to get more information on the, the stereotypes around migrant domestic workers specifically, um, partly because she wasn't able to participate in the beginning of the conversation. But in fact, we didn't really talk about migration. Yeah. Um, so I think it's important uh, to, yeah, let's say in, in some countries, we know that there's a majority of domestic workers who are migrants. And in other countries, the percentage is much lower of, of cross-border migrants, but maybe they're still internal migrants coming from the rural to the urban areas. And there too, there can be some vulnerabilities. Um, so I think when, when we look at care policies together with migration policies, the, the conversation is, is, is um, similar, but there is this added dimension. So um, let's say you could, you could look at it as the, the countries that have the kafala system, for example, in a way, part of their care policy, and it's not a good one, right? But part of the way that they resolve the needs of care is by recruiting migrant domestic workers. So um, if you remember in the, the table, the, the graph with all the dots and the line, Saudi Arabia was up here. And part of the reason why it was up there is because um, while there, there is income inequality within Saudi Arabia, the more important factor is the income inequality between Saudi Arabia and the countries of origin of the domestic workers. So they can meet their care needs with an extremely low paid workforce because the domestic workers from the country of origin are still accepting the price that's, that's paid. Um, so that's sort of one way to look at, at migration and domestic work in that kind of context. Um, I think in Europe, you have a situation where there's also kind of an assumption that a lot of care needs are being met by migrant domestic workers as well. Um, and in Europe, the main problem is one of, you know, declaration and, and formalization. So you could argue that in a lot of countries in Europe, um, the policies are put into place to ensure that uh, certain forms of care work are provided. So, you know, in Scandinavia and, and is the area where most of care services are provided by the public sector, the welfare state. Then you have countries like France um, and Italy and Spain where the domestic workers are really taking a big role in providing child care and elder care in the private home. Um, and in the middle of all of that, I think there's also sort of a gap where they know that a lot of migrants are coming to do the work and so they don't necessarily need to um, extend all of the same rights that are available to, to other workers. I think in, 
in, uh, in a lot of countries, you know, France, they have the same rights, almost pretty much the, the collective agreements are there that cover domestic workers in Italy as well and in, in Spain as well. So the sector as a whole is covered, but when the migrant domestic workers are arriving, they're working in an informal status and in a regular status sometimes. And so they're not accessing the rights that are available to them in the law. Um, so, you know, I, sometimes you have actual policies, migration policies that are in place to recruit domestic workers into these care roles. Um, but more often than not, there's a lack of policies that also prevent um, domestic workers from getting the rights that they would have. So the policy instruments with migration and care are, are a little bit complicated, but I think it's a bit like essential and non-essential conversation before. The absence of a policy on care or the absence of a migration policy can lead to outcomes that are not necessarily bad ones. You can have, like in Argentina, for example, the law covers migrant and non-migrant domestic workers. Um, so theoretically, uh, migrant and non-migrant domestic workers should have access to the same rights. I don't think that there's a particular migration policy that, um, that facilitates that, but there's an absence of a policy uh, that allows for domestic workers to, to get the rights that they need. Um, well, you know, no, it's not perfect, obviously. But then you have the, 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 the kafala system, which is a policy, and that's a policy that's closing the, the opportunities for migrant domestic workers. So it's a little bit um, complex, but I, I think, again, that the focus in those situations should really be on the extent to which migrant domestic workers are included in existing policies and the extent to which uh, migration is facilitated through policies and not blocked. I think the more it's blocked, the more it, it constrains opportunities. Um, I don't know if that answers the question for, for Asmo. Uh, certainly the stereotypes and the discrimination make the situation worse, right? So if you're coming from a different ethnic group uh, as well, you know, that can also create more discrimination. Yeah, we have a group in Taiwan, they, their campaign is called Care Justice. That means the uh, care policies for the uh, people to have, to, to have proper care and also for decent work for the migrant care workers. Okay, um, so I think we have enjoyed our two hours together and um, I think uh, I will um, put up the video and make summary and share to all of you and then maybe we can keep the exchanges in emails and of course the questions. Um, let me uh, give you maybe uh, in email I will give uh, our colleagues and EXCO members um, what is your reflection from today's learning and then suggestion? So please allow me to give some, uh, to, to have more sharing among us. And, and before we close, we will have another uh, webinar, Zoom meeting for all our affiliates on 25th of October. And this will be for our affiliates only. It is to facilitate uh, the learnings with our affiliates. Um, Elizabeth just shared the leaflet on care. Um, that is a, uh, to allow our affiliates to start um, talking and thinking about it. And then with the ITUC and the Global Union Federations, there, were, there will be several webinars around the 29th of October, the Global Action Day on Care Work. So uni, ITUC and different regions are organizing some. So I will share the information to all of you once all these webinars uh, meeting details are uh, confirmed. So I hope you all enjoy and thank you so much, especially for Claire, 
and she also coordinated with uh, her colleagues in the I.O. So that's why we have Umberto and uh, Emma Nguyen Nuela uh, to be with us. Uh, it is very, very rich. I've learned a lot and thank you so much. Thank you all of you to be here. Thank you. Thanks, thank everyone. you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, Fish. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Claire. See you. Thank you, Sophia and Candy. Thank Hello, Himaya. Hello, Himaya. Now, hello, Fish. Thank you, Fish. Thank you, Fish. Thank you, Fish. Wow. Novia yeah. Maya is our leaders in the Philippines. I yeah. Wow, well, I miss you. Miss you too. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Oh. <laughs> you look fat, Himaya. Yeah, she's very, very fat. <laughs> she's shy. <laughs> she, co she covered her big tummy. <laughs> I, I should